welcome friends, welcome to worship. I'd like to welcome you to this wonderful occasion where we have an opportunity to worship together as four congregations. Today we have the congregation of Rosedale Gardens Presbyterian Church, of St. Paul's Presbyterian Church. We have the congregation of Garden City Presbyterian Church, and we have St. Timothy's Presbyterian Church. What a wonderful tradition it is that once a year we come together to worship. And now it's even more special. As we know, there are many visitors out there watching. Whatever the day, whatever the time that you watch, we welcome you. For this is indeed our opportunity to give God thanks and praise together. Our theme today is called Healing and Wholeness. And you'll be able to pick up on that theme through messages, through prayers, through music. And so now I invite you to enter into a spirit of worship. Let us worship God. Our God is the God of hope. Of healing. Of wholeness. We now come into God's presence today with confidence, knowing that God has come to meet us here. Where we are sad, God brings joy. Where we are tired, God brings refreshment. Where we feel despair, God brings a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a safe haven for you. Where what is broken in us, Jesus heals. Where what is fractured in us, Jesus makes whole. Wherever you are, let this place be a sanctuary. Our call to worship this morning has been adapted from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark. And hear now God's words for you today. A large crowd followed and pressed around Jesus, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our theme today is healing and wholeness. And I'm reminded of the fact that in the Gospels, 20% of those Gospels are made up of healing stories. How important it is for our Gospel writers to remind us and tell us about all these amazing narratives, these encounters that people have with Jesus where just being in his presence, he heals them. I guess you could also say from that point on, the whole New Testament could be God coming to us as Jesus and the New Testament is our healing story, where God is doing God's work through Jesus, and Jesus is healing us, that rift that was created since the creation story through the Old Testament, and that now Jesus has come to bridge that rift, that gap between humanity and between God. And so the Gospel writer of Mark reminds us today that God is always about God's healing work even sometimes when we can't see it or feel it or touch it, that God is always creating. God is always reconciling. And in Jesus, who walked this earth and encountered people and touched them and looked into their eyes, we see that like no other. The story that was read to you today from the Gospel of Mark is the story of the unnamed woman What an incredible story it is. So when I like to read scripture, I want to picture it. So I would ask you in your mind's eye to create the scene of this story. So imagine that you're above, that you're overhead, and there is this big crowd below of people. Imagine some Palestine dusty road, and there's Jesus in the midst of this throng of people. Maybe you can even colorize his robe and make it whiter so you can see him easier. And somewhere around him, his right, his left, perhaps in front of him, behind him, are these scattered disciples. They're within arm's reach or maybe, maybe six to ten feet. And they're still in this throng of people. Now I want you to go and look at the back of the crowd. And there's this woman. And she just starts coming. And she is winding herself around people. How interesting, though, that really, for a long time, all the people she passes and threads herself through, they don't even see her. She's really invisible. And perhaps as she begins to get closer, one of the disciples sees her. Maybe he sees her, but doesn't really see her. I mean, it wasn't uncommon for the disciples to see all these people surrounding Jesus who wanted to be healed. So they were used to seeing sick people, men, women, teenagers, children, friends bringing friends. So it's interesting to wonder what it would be like from their perspective. So imagine yourself now a disciple on the ground Jesus is not that far in front of you, and here comes this woman like she is on a mission. She's bypassed everybody, and then she does it. She reaches out, and she touches his clothes, his cloak, 
scripture says. Now, first of all, let's just stop everything in freeze frame. This woman we know in our scripture passage, and it's really all we know, because we don't know her name and we don't know her family story. We know that she has a physical ailment that involves bleeding, but we really don't even know what that is. Here's what we do know. It's been 12 years. This is not someone who got sick and got well. Chronic illness. We all know people who have had chronic illness, who deal with pain every day. Maybe that's even you. And you know what that pain is like to live with it day in and day out for 12 years. We're also told that she's had her fill of doctors. So imagine her in her day. We can't even imagine. We go to doctor's offices with nursing staff and computers who log our story. Imagine what it would be like in Jesus' day to find a doctor. And once you found a doctor and they didn't help you, to find another one and another one. And every time she went, she paid. So if she's alone, and most likely she is, then she ran out of money. And it says that. She's running low on cash. She can't go to one more doctor because she doesn't have the resources to go. And here's what else we know. She's unclean, according to Jewish law. So imagine, she's isolated, without family, without friends. She's ostracized. Whatever synagogue she attended, they don't welcome her. Her minister, her priest doesn't come over to check on her and to see how she's doing because anyone who would touch her would therefore be unclean and would suffer the same fate. So she is a suffering woman in every regard. So she reaches Jesus. And you have to wonder, how did she even get out of bed in the morning and have any ounce of hope after 12 years of chronic illness and doctor after doctor? Well, we know that she heard of Jesus. Perhaps for her, he, she was his last hope. And so she goes into that crowd and she makes her way there and she touches his cloak and look at what Jesus does. In the midst of a crowd, he stops. The whole train of the crowd just stops. And he turns around and there's a crowd of people and he says, who touched me? Do you think Jesus didn't know? But he asked the question, and lo and behold, there goes one of those disciples because they are on their way to somewhere else. And one of the disciples goes, Lord, how can you even ask the question? We're surrounded by all these people. And while he's responding, Jesus is still searching, still looking, always the good shepherd. And then she comes forward. What a moment. Picture it now in your mind's eye that moment between them. All the crowd probably disappears. And this woman, she makes herself known. And when Jesus turned, he, Scripture tells us he felt this outpouring of healing. So we have to believe that in that moment that he felt that, she's already healed. So now she's standing before Jesus, the Son of God, and God is at work reconciling and healing. And Jesus looks at her, and not only does he give her the gift of healing, it says that he recognized her faith. Imagine Jesus and a crowd of people once again showing us how important it is to minister to the individuals who are right in front of us every day. And he gives her peace she didn't even ask for peace. She just wanted healing. And remember, the way she was darting through that crowd to get to him, she believed he could heal her. Imagine believing that he could heal her after all those doctors couldn't for 12 years. And without even a word, without even looking at her face, that flow of healing comes to her, and he turns and sees her. Not like the disciples see her, not even like we see her. He sees her. He saw every year 
He saw every doctor. And then he saw her faith and her hope. And not only did he give her healing, he gave her peace. Imagine. Sometimes we like to leave Jesus stuck in the pages of the Gospel of Mark. My charge to all of us, you, me, is to never do that. What is it you'd like to ask Jesus to heal in your life? Is it physical? Is it emotional? Is it mental? Is it spiritual? He is the source for all healing in all areas of your life, your past, and your present. And he desires to heal. Remember, it is in God's nature to heal and to bring wholeness. And that is yours today. Peace be with you. Amen. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Let us open our lives to God's healing presence, forsaking all that separates us from God and neighbor. Let us confess to God whatever has wounded us or brought injury to others, that we may receive mercy and become for each other ministers of God's grace. O oh God, Holy Trinity, help us to confess our sins. You give us a place in your creation, and you intend that we love with all that you have made. Far from walking in the Spirit, we stumble on paths that lead to death. O fire of heaven, have mercy on us. Satisfy the longings of our soul by taking us up into your spirit that we may love our neighbor. Rekindle our desire to follow the Savior, Jesus Christ, whose passion in, for obeying you leads us to our inheritance, which is your promised kingdom. To you and the Son and the Spirit, one God, be all worship and praise now and forever. Amen. And now, hear these words of forgiveness. Though we wander from the truth, God brings us back and saves our souls from death. Therefore, once more, hear the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master! Have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. 
Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? None of them returned and gave praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. In my life, I have been honored to sit with many people as they transition from this life to the next. I have noticed many pray for healing. Others just want to go home. It's clear that these wishes can have various meanings. Healing in home often means a cure and returning to their earthly residence. But it might also mean healing of their soul and returning to God. My ministry is focused on providing comfort and mercy in the final days and hours. And in these final days and hours, some offer gratitude to God, while others do not. The story of the ten leopards tells us Jesus healed the ten leopards. He instructed them to show themselves to the priests because uh, according to Leviticus 13, the priests had the power to heal a leper and declare them clean. And there were very strict requirements for the curing of, a le- of the leper. And as the ten departed, as Jesus instructed them, one of them noticed that he had been cured and returns to Jesus to give glory and praise to God and to Jesus. And Jesus' only question were, where are the other nine? None of them returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. Then Jesus said, Samaritan, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This shows us two types of healing, nine of the body and one of the soul. As we look at ourselves, are we like the Samaritan or are we like one of the nine? In our world today, we can thank God that leprosy has been all but eliminated. However, today we have another illness illnesses of the body and of the soul. There's cancer, dementia, COVID-19. They are too numerous to mention all of them. And then there are the diseases of the soul. Prejudice, bigotry, hate, complacency. All these threaten life as we know it. We rely on medicine for diseases of the body, but what can we rely on for diseases of the soul? We are aware of the darkness in the world, but often we forget God's light, which is capable of banishing the darkness. Only our faith, hope, and love will heal our souls. Faith anchors us to God Hope sustains us in difficult times. And our love will reflect the healing light of God into the world, driving away the darkness. Until there is no longer prejudice, bigotry, hate, and complacency, we don't know how this will be accomplished. But this is in God's hands. All we can do is love one another and trust in God. Only then will our hope be realized and we will live in peace and love forever. Amen. 
Scripture reminds us that we have been blessed to be a blessing, and we are going to pause in the midst of this worship service and give our thanks back to God for all that he has given us. We ask that this day that you share a portion of your lives and labors with whichever congregation you so choose, and we also ask that this day you consider making a donation to Cares of Farmington, they are an amazing organization that service all the surrounding communities with all sorts of things from hot meals to food to medicine. We have been called to take care of the least of these, and this is a wonderful way in which to do so. So now, let us receive today's offerings. Join with me in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the wealth you shower on us daily, and we witness the marvelous goodness that comes from you. Transform these gifts into signs of welcome for all who are touched by their use. Transform us into people who bless others throughout each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, friends, we come to our third lesson today, a great passage from Isaiah chapter 51, verses 12 through 16. And the theme of this particular passage and of the message is of comfort. And so, friends, now listen to the word of the Lord, starting in verse 12. I, yes, I am the one who comforts you. So why are you afraid of mere humans who wither like the grass and disappear? Yet I have forgotten the Lord, your creator, the one who stretched out the sky like a canopy and laid the foundations of the earth. Will you remain in constant dread of human oppressors? Will you continue to fear the anger of your enemies? Where is their fury and anger now? It is gone. Soon all you captives will be released. Imprisonment, starvation, and death it will not be your fate, for I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea, causing its waves to roar. My name is the Lord of heaven's armies. 
and I have put my words in your mouth and hidden you safely in my hand. I stretched out the sky like a canopy and laid the foundations of the earth. I am the one who says to Israel, you are my people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So friends, here's this great question that stands before us this morning as we gather together is where do we really find our comfort from? Where do we turn to? And do we recognize that when we turn to comfort in this world, it's fleeting. It turns on us even sometimes. We can't count on it. I think God knows us very well. In fact, scripture says this, that God knows us better than we even know ourselves. And so God knows our needs for comfort. And that's why passages like this exist. They exist to remind us that, yes, we are in need of comfort, but where we turn to it, that's the critical thing. And God here is saying, I'm the one who truly comforts you. But do we remember this? I would say that often we do not. God intends to comfort us. God is our great constant. His comfort is a sure thing. But we have forgotten, and why have we forgotten? Because there's things all around us that threaten us. There's people on our left and on our right. There's people who hate us and are angry at us. We fear things of this world more than just people as well. We fear starvation and imprisonment and even death. God knows that we have all these things that we are deathly afraid of. And sometimes we are not convinced. We're not convinced that God really loves us so much that God can overcome all those things. Sometimes we forget in our faith journey that because God is our comforter and we don't turn to God, that things don't turn out quite the way we want them to. And so because we are forgetful people, (laughs) we have a passage in which reminds us of the very truth of God. I think the biggest problem is not really out in the world, it's in our minds. It's what's going on between our ears. Our thoughts, our processes, all the things that we see and encounter in this world. And we're just not sure. If you're like me at all, you know there are difficulties. You might be going through a difficulty right now. Something that breaks your heart. Something that scares you to death something that you are so unsure about because uh, hardness has come your way that you're just not really sure if God really cares for you like that. But as we see in this passage, God says, this is how much I love you. This is how much I care for you. Friends, do not forget. Our way back to true comfort is God reminding us of the truth of creation itself. In God, we have one who, yes, created the heavens and created the earth and stretched everything out and placed it in place. And we are a part of that creation. Do you think that God would forget about us? We who are God's special creation? God who has set all the universe into play? Would God turn his back at us in our time of great need? Is that who we think God really is? Or can we recognize once more that our God is a God of comfort, that is something that God specializes in. And especially when we are crying out that God answers us so that we may receive the comfort that we need. All throughout scripture, we get these great reminders. One of my favorite is from Psalm 4610, where it says, our God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. That's meant to be comforting. In the Psalms, in this passage in Isaiah, when Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you, one of our our reactions to that is to receive the comfort that God gives, and it is a good comfort. It is a constant comfort. It is a permanent comfort. That we don't have to worry about where God's going to be. We don't have to think, well, is God going to be on vacation today, or am I in the queue when it comes to my prayers that I just have to wait until I, you know, get in line, and then God says, okay, your number's up, what do you need? Do we recognize that our prayers are always at the throne of God? 
that comfort is always available. God says, I, the Lord, I'm here to comfort you. I've not only created the earth, but I am so near that I've created you too. And so our creator God says to us, I am your God and you are my people. Think about that. It's not just that we profess our faith in God and that we go in that direction and that we take that journey as disciples, but critically at the end of this passage, God says, you are my people. Think about how astounding that is. Our God claims us as his people. We belong to God. And so we are meant to take this shift in our minds from looking at creation all around us, seeing all the fear and all the troubles, and that's not ever going to go away, and to shift our view and our hearts and our minds from creation to the Creator. Because it is the Creator who says that we belong to Him. So the question is, can we really believe this? As you are sitting, watching this worship today, sitting wherever you are, pondering, do you trust in this? It's a good question to ask yourself in this moment. Do you believe in this truth? Do you understand that because we belong to God, there's comfort to be found there? And the second thing is, it's another question to ask yourself is, do you really know what it means to belong to God? It means that God has claimed you. It means that you have a place to stay. It's a reminder of what Jesus said to his disciples, that though he goes away, he prepares a place for all his disciples. In belonging to God, it means that we are members of God's kingdom right here and right now. It's not something that we have to wait for. The kingdom of God is all around us. And it's not fully grown. We're still waiting for that. Creation is still groaning, absolutely. But the one who is our creator is growing the kingdom and we are invited to come and to participate in that growth. So once more, let's hear these words. God says, I, the Lord, I comfort you and you are my people. Let's remember that today. As we seek comfort, as we seek to turn to the Lord, as we seek to belong to something, let's turn to God once more. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, a day to come together as your people. Help us to remember your truth of comfort, of belonging, of remembering. Help us to turn to you once more in our hearts and in our minds. We pray this in your name. Amen. Now, friends, 
we come to a time of healing and wholeness. We begin today with a prayer of thanksgiving and then we turn to a prayer of intercession on behalf of the people of the world and of ourselves as we once more remember the goodness of our God. Will you pray with me? By your power, great God, our Lord Jesus healed the sick and gave new hope to the hopeless. Though we cannot command or possess your power, we now invite you to come, O Holy Spirit, and heal those who seek you and are calling upon your name. Though we can't be together in the body, we are drawn together by the Spirit, and we know that you are moving through us all. Lord God, come upon all who receive this ministry of compassion, that they may know your healing touch and be made whole. When you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. So let us pray. For all in need of healing, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who lack the strength to face another day, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are living with chronic illness or disability, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are fearful and anxious, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who give care, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all filled with sorrow or regret, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are angry or perplexed, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all desiring to be made whole, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of new life, raise us up in the power of the risen Lord so that we may lift our hearts again in songs and praise through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let your lives witness to Christ's love. Let your words bring reconciliation. Let your thoughts be of peace. Let your touch 
bring healing. Let your actions count for justice. Be a sign of hope and a beacon for justice. Go, and may God's blessing be with you. Go, knowing God's healing and wholeness are yours. Share God's peace. Live God's justice. Be God's blessing to others. <laughs>